how Nord Stream was done. Uh, I'm going to show you things you haven't seen before, and I'm going to give you definitive evidence so that you know that the United States was behind the Nord, Nord Stream pipeline sabotages. So I'm going to lay everything out, but stay with me, and I'll get you there. All right, here we go. Not support the SWIFT measures? Let me answer the first question first. If Germany, if, uh, if Russia invades, uh, that means tanks or troops crossing the, uh, the, the border of Ukraine uh, again, then uh, there, will be, uh, we, there will be no longer a Nord Stream 2. We, we will bring an end to it. But do, but how, will you, how will you do that exactly since the project and control of the project is within Germany's control? We will, uh, I promise you, we'll be able to do it. Oh, you notice that little smug look on his face and that smile? Now, he knows exactly what he's talking about, right? But we can't say, you know, people can't say in plain English what we're talking about, okay? But a lot of our government officials, we've already discussed this, that we wanted to end this Nord Stream pipeline. There's dozens and dozens and dozens of video. I'll just play you one real quick. From here to there, but we every everything is on the table. I would say, if if that is helpful. Well, one thing that I believe certainly the Senate Foreign Relations Committee is pretty unified on. It may not be unanimous. Was our support for sanctions against uh, Nord Stream 2 pipeline, and that I think we were all many of us were very disappointed that uh, those sanctions were not fully implemented and the construction continued. Um, I, I can't think of a, a more powerful way to punish uh, Russian aggression than by rolling back what progress has been made and, if at all possible, uh, prevent the Nord Stream 2 from ever being completed. Uh, is that something that is being discussed with allies? Is that something that's being contemplated? Absolutely. And as, if, as you recall from the July U.S.-German statement, that was very much uh, in that statement that if that any moves Russian aggression against Ukraine uh, would have a direct impact on the pipeline, and that is our expectation and the conversation that we're having. So again, direct impact is one thing, but I, I'm, I'm literally talking about rolling back the, the, the pipeline. And it, it, loosely defined that, but I mean taking action that will prevent it from ever becoming operational. I think if President Putin moves on Ukraine, our expectation is that the pipeline will be suspended. Well, I certainly hope uh, that the Senate Foreign Relations Committee would take up uh, legislation to go beyond just suspending it, but from ending it permanently. But anyway, thank you, uh, Undersecretary Newland. They're talking about ending it permanently. Our government officials have talked about destroying it, blowing it up, without actually saying those words. But we're everybody's very clear on what we want. We have the motive that we want to take this Nord Stream pipeline out. So the destruction of the Nord Stream pipeline, the natural gas pipeline that carried, well, natural gas from East to Western Europe, was the single most profound act of environmental terrorism in history. It released more deadly CO2 into the atmosphere. It was also an attack on our NATO allies. Our NATO allies are the beneficiaries of the natural gas pipeline. Germany, which is the core of European NATO, suffered. So the Biden administration was talking about how much it loves NATO, attacked NATO, and they did it. They promised to carry it out. They haven't really denied that they did it. So during an interview with Donald Trump yesterday, we thought we'd ask, who does he think did it? We previewed the answer last night. Here's the full exchange. Who blew up the Nord Stream pipeline? Um, I don't want to get our country in trouble, so I won't answer it. But uh, I can tell you who it wasn't was Russia. Yeah. How about when they blamed Russia? You know, they said Russia blew up their own pipeline. You got a kick out of that one, too. It wasn't Russia. Uh, so I won't answer the question only because I don't want to get our country yeah. any deeper than they already are. But it sort of all starts. We have, you know, we have the most. OK, so now we have the current president saying they're going to end Nord Stream. We have our government officials saying they're going to end Nord Stream. And we also have the previous president, Donald Trump, saying, oh, I don't want to say who did it, but it certainly wasn't Russia. And I don't want to get us in trouble. Okay, so everything is alluding to the United States 
blowing this pipeline up. Okay, so you know, just add add one more kicker. We had uh, Redick Sikorsky. Uh, if you can see this, but right after uh, the blowing up of the pipeline, he tweeted out, "Thank you, USA," and then later deleted this. Okay, but. Okay, so now we just have some circumstantial evidence. Okay, let's let's get into the really you know meat and bones of everything going on here and, and how this this took place. So, what ha how this originally occurred, how this started? Well, there's a there's a long story about Biden. They wanted to do it, and Biden talked with security officials and everything and the intelligence community, but they used this Bolt Ops twenty two. Um, to actually plant the explosives, okay. So the uh, this Balt Ops 22 is a it's a, pre, a premier maritime focused exercise in the Baltic region. It took place between June 5th to June 17th. Um, and here's the website, the press release, all about it. Uh, the per, the participating nations were Belgium, Bulgaria, Denmark, Estonia, Finland, France, Germany, Latvia. Lithuania, the Netherlands, Norway, Poland, Sweden, Turkey, the United Kingdom, and the United States. Okay? And they were doing all sorts of things underwater. But, you know, one of the notable things here is saying scientists from five nations brought the latest advancements in under, unmanned underwater vehicle mine hunting technology to the Baltic Sea to demonstrate the vehicle's effectiveness in operational scenarios. The Balt Ops Mine Countermeasure Task Group ventured throughout the Baltic region, practicing ordnance location exploitation and disarming in critical maritime choke points. Okay, so they were ar around the Baltic region, and the Balt Ops 22 was a perfect cover to plant these explosives. Now, there is a lot of speculation over how these explosives were planted. Now we know that they used Navy divers, okay? And the Navy SEALs have several vehicles that can get them from point A to B underwater. Now, some people have speculated that the dry combat submersible was used to plant these explosives under the on the pipelines. Um, but in my personal opinion, I do not believe that the dry combat submersible was used because uh, it was estimated by experts that each of the explosions were 500 uh, kilograms apiece. And if one uh, submersible mini sub were to go around and plant all those, it would take multiple, multiple missions with a dry combat submersible. Now, there is another vehicle called the Advanced Seal Delivery System. Now, this is the biggest mini sub uh, that's publicly known that, it, that the Navy SEALs have access to. And this would be able to. Uh, not only uh, it would be able to carry all that weight, it would be able to carry 2,000 kilograms worth of explosives. That's 500 kilograms times four. And also, it's able to get down to the depths that you need to get down to. The the pipeline explosions, they happened between 230 feet and 295 feet. Um, and it's questionable whether the dry combat submersible, uh, because of the lock-in and lock-out, uh, that they do with divers, that that takes place at about 95 feet. So the dry combat submersible might not have been capable of, of pulling this off. The advanced seal delivery system, while older, was capable of pulling this off. Uh, the, dry combat, the dry combat submersible is also uh, brand new and just been delivered, so they don't even have much training on this at all. Versus this is a, the advanced seal delivery system is a tried and true method. It has a simulator. It's been used for for scenarios of blowing up pipelines. There's training missions for blowing up pipelines. It can be done. Okay, so now we're really going to get into it. Okay, so this is public data. What I'm about to show you. This is where it really gets intense. Okay, this is flight uh, radar 24. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it back. I'm going to bring it back to the date of September 26th. Okay. September 26th. I'm going to start this playback. Okay, here we are, September 26th. So, just starting off, just so you know, here's a little uh map of 
of where we're looking at here. The pipeline, the first explosion happened around here, and the next three happened up here. Um, this took place uh, at about, this is in UTC time down here. The first explosion took place at 12.03 a.m. Okay, so um, let me go back. So as I said, if you if you bring these, if, if you overlay this, you can see the first point is here, and the next ones would be about up here. But this one down here exploded at 12.03. All right. So the one let's 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 actually go a couple hours back and let's actually bring it back to I will bring it the time uh back to 22:45 all the way to here Now look at this right here this is before the first explosion keep in mind the first explosion happened about right here in the timeline now we have a helicopter that is loitering now what is this helicopter let me click on this again it's going to load it this helicopter has been loitering here for a long time now this is the path that it's already been that's already done unfortunately when i go back in the timeline it doesn't show it go through this, but it has the history of this flight path. So this helicopter has been loitering. Now, what is this helicopter? It is a Sikorsky MH-60R Seahawk. Okay, now let me pull that up for you and show you what that is. The MH-60 Seahawk is a multi-mission helicopter operated by the U.S. Navy and also known as Romeo. It's the most capable naval helicopter available today designed to operate from frigates, destroyers, cruisers, and aircraft carriers. The primary tasks of the MH-60R Seahawk are anti-submarine warfare and anti-surface warfare. This helicopter has torpedoes and missiles for assault, as well as the ability to track and locate submarines and surface vessels. The other missions are search and rescue, combat search and rescue, vertical resupply, medical evacuation, and the insertion and removal of special troops. The Seahawk has modern mission systems and sensors. It's equipped with a FLIR turret located on the nose, sophisticated airborne active sonar, and multi-mode search radar. Automatic periscope detection and discrimination is possible with its multi-mode search radar. It also has sauna buoys that are launched from the air. However, a magnetic anomaly detector was taken out of service. Data is transmitted via an advanced airborne fleet data link. The Seahawk is powered by. Okay, so that was that's the important information that you need to know. So that's the type of helicopter that's be, being used. Now, one thing that was mentioned was sauna buoys. Sauna buoys are what actually triggers the explosions once they've been in place. The sauna buoy is, uh, sends the acoustic signal through the water, and it reaches the uh, the uh, explosives and then it has a timer on there a certain time or certain amount of hours that it's going to go off so this is speculation but we know that this helicopter has been loitering here for a long long time okay and it just keeps circling back here okay now it is capable of detonating this pipeline with those sauna buoys this helicopter it is capable of setting those explosives off it keeps loitering, loitering, loitering. I'm going to go all the way to when the pipeline is blown up. Okay, by now, there's an explosion in the water here. Okay, let me click on this. It's still loitering around, around. More time. Let me fast forward it a little more. Find a little time. Long time. In fact, click on here. Now it has perfect, <clears throat> it has visibility of, but you know, it potentially has visibility as well of the pipeline. But we're going to cover that more in, in a little bit. <clears throat> You're going to see how crazy this gets. So this 
helicopter is going to loiter all the way until about 1.30. Let me speed it up a little bit. Where is it at? 134. Keeps going, 135. And this is in the morning. This is 135 in the morning. And I believe that we're going to lose contact with it very shortly. Yep. And it just goes off the map. I don't have any more data on that. 138. I'm still there. 143. Okay. I think that's where we lose it. Yeah, right about there. We have no more data for that. Okay, so in reality, that helicopter, that U.S. Navy helicopter with sauna buoys designed for submarine warfare, it loitered for three hours, for three hours here, okay? But that's not, that's not, and this is during the time of the first explosion, okay? So speculation, but it dropped a sauna buoy that set off this explosion, okay? Now, um, we're going to now uh, check out something that is uh, really crazy, and it's not not just the not just the coincidence. So now we're going to bring it back to to twenty three twenty eight. Okay. Let's make it a little easier. Keep in mind the first explosion is about right here. Bear with me, it's loading. Oops. All right. Let's make this easier. Okay. Here we go. Now we have this no call sign plane. Okay. Uh, meaning we don't really don't know who this is. Okay, let's follow this guy back. Okay, here he is. Okay, so here's this no call sign coming in. Now keep in mind the, ex the first explosion happened right here. Now this plane took off. Well, let's see. The only the data we have on it is it came out of nowhere. So I don't. Somehow, it must have been on a ship or something. I don't. I don't know. This is all the data we have. Whoops. Okay. Now let me stop this. All right. Let me slow it down. I'll show you what this is. It has the, it's loading. I'm sorry, it's a little bit slow. Okay, so this is, keep in mind, there's no call sign. Okay, we really don't know who this is. They came out of the middle of the water. They were launched. Okay, I don't know where that came from. Um, let's pause it. Sorry for the loading. Now, 
Now keep in mind, this, this is a Boeing P-8A. Okay, here we go, it's paused. This is a Boeing P-8A Poseidon, okay? Now what is that? Let me show you what that is. As we get to the back here, you can see cut out here is the weapons bay. We have the ability to carry uh, torpedoes as well. The primary mission of the P-8 is anti-submarine warfare. Uh, so the idea is this uh, aircraft can go out cold water, search for an aircraft, refine that position, and then complete the kill chain uh, with a torpedo if necessary. You can even see behind the weapons bay here, you have these openings. These are the sonar buoy, uh, the exits for the sonar buoy launchers. So launching sonar buoys is our main way of uh, prosecuting submarines. Used acoustically, we're basically just uh, launching large microphones into the water to try and listen uh, for the submarines or maybe actively acquire them. And we have the ability to launch many, many, many sonar buoys uh, and stay on station tracking someone if necessary uh, for long periods of time as well. Hi, my name is Mallory. Okay, so what he's telling you is, that, first of all, this is a U.S. Navy, once again, this is another U.S. Navy uh, vehicle, okay? I wish you would, I wish I could pause this. Okay, it's paused. This is another U.S. Navy vehicle. It's a reconnaissance aircraft. It is anti-submarine warfare, anti-surface warfare. It's a submarine killer. Now it can drop all these sonar buoys. So just like the uh, just like this uh, Sikorsky MH-60R, it also can detonate underwater explosives with the sonar buoys. Now the the interesting thing is that keep in mind that this first explosion that happened right here. That took place at 12.03 a.m., about here in the timeline. This, this uh, Boeing P-88 Poseidon, it took off before the explosion even happened, okay? So it's not like it was going at it, it heard, oh, there's been an explosion, go investigate. It took off before that even happened, okay? So also, you will notice that it is going right by the explosion site, right here, okay? The pipeline has already exploded now in this timeline, and within about, within a little more than one hour, it is already flying over exactly where it occurred. No doubt, the United States is making taking reconnaissance and making sure that that pipeline has blown up when they thought it's going to blow up. It's going to get even crazier. Okay, as I said, once again, very sketchy, has no call signed. Now, keep in mind that helicopter still loitering over there that I showed you in the beginning. Now, what's this? This is a third aircraft. This is a Boeing KC-130R Strato tanker. So what this is, what this is, this is a, uh, in this is a uh, a refueling plane. This is a refueling plane for this Poseidon. So what they're going to do now is they're going to link up, and this guy is going to refuel this Poseidon. So now they're going to dance with each other. And I'll speed that up. Now you can see both of them are by each other. They're hugging each other. And they're going to do loops and loops and loops. No call sign with that strato, ta strato tanker getting you refueled. Looping around, looping around, looping around. Do you really believe it is coincidence is flying right over where it blew up, right at the exact time? They wanted to make sure the explosives they wanted to make sure that they could see what had happened when they had done it. This is U.S. Navy. As you can see, by now that helicopter has gone. Helicopter is gone, but we still have our Poseidon here for reconnaissance. It's going to fly around more. Let's speed this up. They're still hugging each other. This is the strato tanker doing its laps. Whoops. Okay, here we go. 
the no call sign, once again, it's going to get a really good look for what happened here. For reference, this is where it blew up. It is seeing it. It's, it can see it right here. It's going back and forth, making sure it gets a good sight. Now it's going up towards this. This is the site of the other explosions. Now this won't take place for another 17 hours or so, or about 14 hours from now. Now here's the other interesting thing. You'll notice the altitude. The altitude is getting very low. 9,300. 7,275 feet. That's very low. And I believe we're going to lose contact with it. Yep. And that's all the data we have. It goes off the map. There's no more data for it. Now, what I'm speculating is that this reconnaissance plane was used to look at the Poseidon was used to look at the first one. And then it dropped up. Oh, yep. That's all the data we have. It dropped sauna buoys. Now, the, and these sauna buoys triggered the timer for the next explosion. Uh, so we have all this radar data. Um, yeah, so there, that, that pretty much lays it out. The United States aircraft was in the area. We said that we were going to do this. Uh, our government officials said we were going to do it. Uh, we had the means, we had the motive, we had the opportunity. The Balt Ops 22 is when we planted them. Um, so yeah, uh, I hope that helps. Talk to you later.